Dear participants, thank you so much. Uh, good evening. We can start our meeting, our webinar today. Um, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, on behalf of uh, BioRoot uh, team, I would like to thank you that you found the time and uh, you're participating today in our webinar, Bioactive Hydraulic Sealers in Contemporary uh, Simple Endodontic Obturation, uh, which will be led by two international speakers, our guests, uh, Professor Elisabetta Cotti and Dr. Giulia Bardini. Let me first of all uh, present our colleagues. So, Professor Elisabetta Cotti, sorry, full professor and chairman of conservative dentistry and endodontics uh, of the Department of Conservative uh, Dentistry, uh, University uh, of the University of uh, Cagliari. Uh, she is the director of the postgraduate program in clinical endodontics of the university uh, of the same university so university or uh, university of Cagliari uh, professor teaches in the advanced education programs in endodontics uh, in different universities uh, she is the lecturer of the department of uh, endodontic uh, university uh, Loma Linda uh, USA uh, she is the regent of uh, a member of many European associations and uh, Professor Koti also the author of the several articles and chapters uh, in the field of uh, endodontics. Uh, Julia Vardini, um, our respected Dr. Julia Vardini, um, she has the um, she obtained uh, the master in endodontic uh, and surgical endodontics of the University of Cagliari, graduated in dentistry uh, of the University of Parma, and she's a tutor and clinical uh, supervisor uh, supervisor at the University of Cagliari. Um, first of all, thank you so much for your participation, dear speakers, uh, today. And uh, as the second point, I would like to uh, present you the agenda of our meeting. Uh, we would like to make it more interactive. And in order to know uh, better our audience, uh, we would offer you uh, several questions um, uh, just to exchange your expertise and clinical practice. After that, we are moving to the main part of our meeting today. This is the recorded webinar uh, with the subtitles in Spanish language. and. Um, after the recorded webinar, which will take us approximately 45 minutes, we will have uh, questions and answers. Uh, the professors, they will stay with us and they will answer all your questions after the webinar. Uh, please yet take your time. Uh, you can send all your questions through the form here and we will definitely uh, reply to all of them after. And in the end of our meeting, we will have a very short survey, uh, kindly asking you uh, to provide your feedback as well for our future fruitful meetings. So let's start uh, with the short interactive part. So you can see on your screen uh, the question. And yes, you can vote. Thank you so much <laughs> for your vote. Uh, just maybe several seconds more. Uh, and then I will demonstrate uh, the answers as well to all of us. Okay, 39% of the vote um, of votes. Okay, so for the first questions, uh, we have the answer. So, do you use in your practice bioactive hydraulic sealers? Uh, yes, we have 48% uh, and 52% uh, answered no. Uh, this is interesting point for us because. Uh, that's why we are here and definitely we will find the new information for you today and of course during live session after the uh, webinar during the uh, questions and answers and the second short question please we are interested in as well could you please look at your screen and uh, please vote as well so uh, which technique of root canal obturation uh, uh, do you prefer do you use in your clinical practice Just maybe several seconds more. It will be nice to know for us as well. And then 
I think it will make our discussion even more interesting and alive. Yeah. So we can see that 59% uh, are using cold technique and 41 warm technique. Thank you for your participation in this uh, interactive part. And now uh, we are moving to the second and actually the most important part. This is our webinar itself. Uh, so dear professors, just uh, stay on mute and without camera. And uh, I will share the screen with the recorded version. Thank you so much and see you in 45 minutes. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to start this uh, seminar uh, on bioactive hydraulic sealers uh, in conjunction with septodon. Uh, first of all, I would like to bring you my best greetings from Sardegna, Italy. Uh, you can see it in this slide. And from Cagliari, our hometown, uh, which I hope you can be able to visit sometime when this pandemic will go to an end. Uh, I also recall that we're working in a university facility where we have a postgraduate in endodontics. Now, as I said before, we're going to discuss about the new bioactive hydraulic sealers, which is a reality taking place in endodontics, as said in these slides, contemporary endodontics. And we're going to go through a small introduction. We're going to discuss the beginning of the story. So the hydraulic bioactive endodontic cements are their meaning. And then we're going to move to the bioceramic hydraulic sealers, the latest. And we're going to share with you some of our clinic and some of our studies. OK. Now, this is probably the first record that we have about endodontic obturation. This is a paper that was published in the Journal of American Dental Association a few years ago, uh, and it was an archaeologic finding of a first tooth that was obturated and radiographed, of course, for that particular purpose. Uh, and that belonged to uh, Nabatean, people living in Petra in Jordan. And there was a, an implanted bronze wire within a root canal. So it represents the first record that we really have of an intentional root canal treatment. Uh, just to point out that it was understood, it was finalizing endodontic treatment meant to fill the canal. Now, going to the history of root canal treatment, the first important outcome study was done by Dr. Ingle in the 50s, and they came up with the conclusion that endodontic obturation was crucial for a good endodontic outcome, especially in cases with apical periodontitis. And uh, in the last 50 years, a number of outcome studies have been run at different levels, one of the most common conclusions was that the quality of root canal filling has a significant influence of the success of primary but also secondary root canal treatments. So obturation is the finalization of root canal, and it is extremely important, both because it represents uh, the final moment of a thorough cleaning, shaping, and disinfection of a space, but also because it represents the real filling of a space. And interestingly, uh, one, this, this is one of the latest paper that was conducted using CBCT examinations of uh, failing root canal treatments. And the group by Sikera found that uh, the volume of an unfilled canal was significantly associated with the size of the lesion, not only with the presence of the lesion, so with the not healing cases, but also with the size of the lesion and the bacterial count, not to mention some bacterial choice like actinomyces. So we're still going back to the importance of root canal obturation. Uh, what is the gold standard accepted in the uh, endodontic community uh, when it comes to endodontic obturation? We use uh, a semi-solid or solid obturating material and a root canal sealer which is important because it will help to achieve a better uh, obturation of a space, especially in 
as an interface between the solid or semi-solid material and the root canal wall. And possibly these sealers should be uh, active in terms of uh, being uh, bactericidal or uh, bacterial, in, in one way or another bacteriostatic, if possible, so to help in the final moment of root canal treatment. Now, unfortunately, there are cases in which there is the need for an alternative filling material in endodontics. Why alternative? Because we need a seal on endoperiodontal communication that happen to be unusual in the shape, size, position, and particularly influenced by a wet environment, such as perforations. Uh, also, all kinds of resorptive defects, open apexes, both uh, iatrogenic or uh, connected to immature teeth, and last but not least, surgical obturation, or kind of surgical obturation, which means endodontic obturation done and performed uh, in a, under a surgical flap. So these are the cases, so-called unusual cases, in which we needed some other, some different response than uh, the classic endodontic obturation. Why? Because it's very difficult to fill an open apex or uh, a complex anatomy where it's almost also difficult to reach it by instrumentation, uh, not to mention perforating defects, which are mostly iatrogenic defects, where you get really in touch with the periodontium. Uh, same can happen with badly resorbed apexes uh, of root canals, which are in touch with a long-lasting apical periodontitis. And also, we have resorptive defects, uh, aggressive like uh, uh, external inflammatory resorption, uh, which need to be addressed in a different way than conventional obturation. And as we said before, the root and field, the surgical field uh, under a flap. Uh, so what happens? In the 90s, we experienced some kind of a revolution because uh, in the market, we had the introduction of a hydraulic bioactive endodontic cement. That was a real breakthrough in the story of endodontic clinics. Uh, are we, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, materials that are mainly comprised of calcium silicate cements with a variety of chemical composition. And uh, funny enough, if we go back in time, we know that there is uh, a note by Dr. Fullen that ground Portland was mixed with water, carbolic acid or creosote, uh, could, could be used in endodontic treatment also for pulp capping. By this meaning that before the 1900s, uh, Portland cement was already in use in dentistry in Germany. So what happened next? In the early 90s, Dr. Tora Binajad, my mentor at Loma Linda University, started uh, looking for the perfect uh, retrofill material because of the wet environment of the surgical flap. He was looking for something that wouldn't be damaged by a little bit of blood contamination or humidity. And so he started his experiment, bringing back to life uh, the Portland cement. So, what happened about MTA? So in the 90s, they studied uh, the use of a modified Portland cement to uh, fill endoperiodontal communication, particularly surgical communication. And so MTA was placed in the market. What is the best uh, characteristic of this uh, cement? And we're talking about a cement. It is hydraulic, that means hydrophilic, uh, and uh, it's a cement which develops its best properties in the presence of moisture. And we know how important it is that we have an hydrophilic uh, filling material because the oral environment is inherently wet. And unfortunately, most of dental materials seem to favor a dry field, which is the opposite of what we find in the mouth, no matter what we can do. And this is a classic study that is important to quote because when they were preparing MTA to be, uh, to be marketed, they were testing its multiple application. And this is a study from Torabinajad group and in particular Dr. Higa, where they simulated uh, open uh, 
retro a retrograde preparation in the roots. They filled the retrograde preparation with different uh, cements available at that moment. And they did the double test. They, it was a dye leakage penetration test as it was used until probably 10 years ago. And they created two conditions for, with each material. One was uh, using the filling material in a dry environment, and was, one was using the filling material in a blood contaminated uh, environment. Interestingly, you can see the result of this study, and you can see that um, man, man, mineral trioxide aggregate at that point, the MTA performed better than every other material that was used up to that time for doing the retrofill in surgical fields. Not only that, but it was not influenced at all from uh, the blood contamination, actually was performing slightly better. So there was a breakthrough that made us know that this material was fantastic, even when, we're when we were not in total control of the field in terms of moisture. That does not mean that we can use it in the midst of a blood contamination, but that means that it's tolerating some kind of blood contamination. So that was the beginning, and we're talking about the late 90s at this point, and we started using it for all of the complex uh, cases. And then other material came along. So we came to a point that we're talking about bioceramics and Portland cement. And the most important uh, representative of the bioceramics is biodentin, uh, who had similar qualities. We, to mention them, those, uh, and those cements undergo a hydrating reaction. They form calcium hydrate silicate gel and calcium hydroxide. So they release calcium hydroxide and create a very alkaline environment. So that means they are antibacterial and they, are, uh, they have an optimum sealing ability even in the presence of moisture and a very good biocompatibility. Okay. And uh, most important, which is coming out uh, more and more often now with more research performed, these materials have been defined bioactive. Why? Because when they interact with tissue fluids, they uh, nucleate uh, apatite spherulites. So that means that they are biocompatible, they favor the opposition of uh, hard tissue against the uh, cement, and also they get a better seal with time. So that was a real uh, achievement in the endodontic field. The best literature that you can find if you are interested or if you have problems with sleeping at night is the collection on MTA from 2010, which is Parirot or Abinajad. You can get every information up to 2010 on uh, uh, the chemical and physical property of, of the different bioceramics and uh, Portland type cements. Uh, their attitude towards leakage and uh, their way of use, and also clinical application and possible drawbacks. Then, uh, to keep it updated, we had a second collection by Torabinaj of Pariro and Paul Dammer. So, these articles contain all the information that you may want to know about the different uh, uh, silicate sealers, uh, cements in the market. Uh, what is important to remember is we're talking about a very biocompatible uh, kind of cement, and Dr. Camilleri did a fantastic job in the last 20 years on this topic. And uh, they had, as I said, a very good sealing ability. This, is, this study was published in 2002, is one of the thousand studies done on uh, sealing ability of Portland cement. And uh, I'm quoting this because we did it uh, in 2002. We simulated an open apex, and we had uh, and we built a bacterial chamber. By this, we mean that we left open the uh, root canal to the uh, bacterial injection. Of course, the root canal was sealed uh, with MTA, uh, gutta percha, and sealer. Or, of course, we had a positive control, the canal was empty, negative control, the canal was totally sealed. Then we injected two different kinds of bacteria, and of course, the broth would become red when the bacteria reached, uh, got, got out of the canal and uh, reached the broth, culture broth. 
And the result was, as you can see in this chart, that of course positive control leaked at day one, negative control never leaked until we ended the experiment, while gutta percha leaked in 56 days. So it took 56 days for the bacteria to cross the canal obturated with gutta percha and sealer, while it took 17, it didn't even take 70 days for MTA or Portland field canals to reach the uh, <laughs> apex of the tooth. Actually, at 70 days, we simply ended the experiment. So that is, and many, many other experiments of the like of this were uh, conducted those, those days and confirmed this finding. Uh, what should we say about this miracle um, product? Uh, they need to be mixed very carefully, and because they are hydrophilic, they need to be controlled in their interaction with moisture. That means that you add uh, the fluid uh, part of a cement, and you can play with a gauze in order to correct an excess of uh, wetness. When you, you put it in the uh, place where you want to repair or fill, you can also uh, adjust uh, the hydration of a cement using paper points. You need, of course, uh, delivery uh, instruments that can be uh, mostly um, amalgam uh, carrier or modified amalgam type carrier, like this latest one. And of course, you need endodontic pluggers, and uh, and I think this is the basis. What is important to know, and this is why we're moving to the next step, is that in order to perform the best property, which is sealing ability and uh, the hydrophilicity in in uh, in difficult and unusual case like perforation of an apex as surgical fields, uh, both Portland's and biodentin need to have some kind some kind of thickness. So you cannot just spread the material, but the material must have at least two millimeter consistency in order to function at its best. So it cannot be indicated in a flat surface simply to cover a floor of a chamber, for example. So most of the power of, uh, of their ceiling ability is reflected by the possibility to create a bulk of this material, which doesn't render these cements useful for a simple root canal obturation. So what happens? So we learned that we can use uh, MTA, biodentin, uh, and all kinds of Portland-like cement to fill the open apex in one appointment. Because not only they can provide a tight seal in the open apex, and these are uh, pictures from the experiments, original experiments from Shabahang and Torabinajat, but also you will achieve a repair of an open apex on uh, against the, the Portland or the biodentin. And so you can see few cases. This is a case uh, in which uh, we did an apexification. It was a necrotic tooth following trauma. And you see, I filled uh, four millimeters of a root canal, uh, closing the open apex with a Portland-like uh, cement. And then uh, restoration was carried on. And you can see that uh, along the years, we had also a repair of the heart tissue on top of the Portland and of course healing of apical periodontitis. Here's another most recent trauma case, uh, double fracture of the crown, uh, double fracture of the roots in these two central incisors that was, were also extruded and replanted. Uh, the coronal segments, which were two thirds of the teeth, uh, became necrotic. So we had to address two open apexes right uh, to the point they were fractured. And those were addressed with uh, another Portland cement, which was placed in the canals and used to do a fill of both spaces. And then it also favored, as you can see from the difference in this slide, healing of the heart tissue around this cement. Again, uh, difficult cases like uh, other root fractures, this is horizontal root fractures, the fragment became necrotic and came up with a sinus tract. And it was very difficult to seal only the coronal fragment, which is very thick with uh, a, an endodontic 
obturating material. So Portland was the best. And you can see healing and even a long time recall. Complex cases also, where you have difficult anatomies like a dancing dent, you have double apex, a strange shape you need to fill in. You cannot simply close this with gutta percha and sealer. So a Portland or a biodentin would do, and you can select to use the same material to close all the spaces. And uh, the same, this is biodentin that was used to repair uh, this perforating wide internal root resorption that was already communicating with the outside of the tooth. So it's a very, very uh, weakening uh, situation and also more dangerous because it was in communication with the outside. Um, the biocompatibility uh, and uh, the bioactivity of this uh, cement has also been uh, noticed when treating severe cases, like this is an um, external invasive cervical root resorption. Very invasive. You see, it has been resorbed one third of the root, even more so. So after conducting a both ways root canal, starting from the root chamber, uh, from a pulp chamber and along the root canal in a surgical mode. Uh, the space was filled with Portland and uh, the flap was coronally repositioned. You see, along five years, uh, the flap, uh, the periodontium is in a good shape. There is no probing, incredible. So it was a fantastic bed for uh, reattachment of the periodontium. Um, Portland was also biocompatible and long-term effective for perforation, again, endoperiodontal communication. So you see, you can test the signaling ability and its biocompatibility, not to mention the bioactivity to notice the healing of a defect with cementum and bone. So perforation, which are normally iatrogenic uh, problem, uh, can be easily and fruitfully sealed with uh, biodentin, bioceramics in general, and Portland's. As long as you can use uh, and control the moisture. You see, this is a perforation that occurred while preparing a post space, and it was right into the furca. A repair was a big deal, but uh, it held a good uh, healing. And sometimes, as a consequence of apical periodontitis, we can have uh, an enlargement of a root apex, uh, uh, which is resolved. In this case, you had a big lesion. We had a sinus tract on the palatal. This is a calcium hydroxide medication, which emphasizes the uh, resorptive area of the palatal root. And see the Mesial and distal roots were uh, closed with gutta percha. Palatal root was closed with MTA, and we had a perfect healing. And uh, as we said before, uh, last but not least, root and fill. So whether we're filling a root end during a surgical intervention or we're filling a perforation during the surgical intervention, we do it surgically. You see a specimen from original study of Tora Binajat. This is this done on monkeys. And you can see easily, this is the original root and cavity, which was filled with MTA, as lost during the preparation of a specimen. And you see cementum healed nicely on top of the MTA and bone next to the cementum. And this is why most Portland and bioceramic cements are now considered a standard of care for retrograde endodontic obturation and surgical root canal perf perf repair. So what comes next? Of course, there's been a lot of research in this sense, which lasted 20 years at this point. And so we move to the need for sealers because we've been mentioning cement for now, but cement, as I said, requires some thickness and cannot be applied to everyday endodontic with a regular root canal. So the literature uh, has been moving slowly, uh, 
potentiating any information on the original bioceramics and Portlands, and moving into something new, which would be applying what we have of good in these cements to endodontic sealers. And so they started to come into the market. At the beginning, we didn't know very much what to do with them. So we would use them in difficult cases, which were too specific to be filled with uh, gutta percha and sealer, and too tiny to be filled with regular biodentin or Portlands. So for example, this is an anatomic variation. I needed some cement which would fill some inherently internal portion of the tooth in a way that was more predictable. And here we use the bioactive sealer in conjunction with gutta percha. Feeling better because we know that this space has been filled with a specific silicate uh, sealer. Uh, again, this is another uh, pattern of resorption, Dif very difficult to catch both with cleaning and shaping. So this is medication with calcium hydroxide, and then no single cone obturation using the, the hydraulic sealer. And you can see that the sealer was able to fill in all possible gaps uh, left uh, around the main canal. And also we have a good, if you look at the periodontal space, we had a good healing of a space. So all of the spaces that were not reachable by the single cone were reached and filled and sealed by the sealer. This is another uh, uh, external inflammatory uh, resorption. Very difficult to approach because uh, it's connected with the root canal, but it's not in total continuity with the root canal and it's uh, very difficult to be reached by by surgically because it would be, need uh, an internal sur bone surgery, a lingual bone surgery. And you can see the complexity of this case. And, uh, and again, another view of a CBCT. So again, with this is, you see the resorptive area on this side, the shaping and cleaning of the canal, and then the choice of using a bioactive um, hydraulic sealer in conjunction with a gutta percha cone to fill all of the empty spaces that we couldn't be reached specifically not even with instrumentation. So we have an active uh, alkaline pH sealer acting in this area. Further, it is uh, filling the gap with a good saleability. So that was the beginning of the use of this new sealer. And then we moved to something different, which is everyday sealing uh, of uh, root canals using the new uh, bioceramic hydraulic sealer. And I leave my uh, Julia Bardini to continue this. Thank you, Professor Cauti. Uh, thanks to the physiochemical uh, characteristic of calcium silicate-based cements, Endodontic sealers based on the composition of calcium silicates have been introduced over the last years into the market. Bioceramic or bioactive hydraulic sealers can be used in conjunction with gutta percha for regular endodontic obturation. Let me show you some uh, physiochemical uh, bioroot characteristics. In in vitro study, uh, BioRoot showed a high calcium release that uh, constantly increased pH in uh, the solution over um, a medium and long period. An important dentinal tubule penetration was uh, uh, demonstrated uh, compared to other sealer and temporary intracanal dressing with calcium hydroxide decreased dentinal tubule penetration of bioroot. These images are from our university and you can uh, see how uh, this dentinal tubule infiltration is uh, achieved with bioroot and uh, uh, some authors define it as a, a mineral infiltration zone. About the interaction with dentin, um, an important consideration uh, should be done because uh, um, 
some authors demonstrated that eating bio root can uh, result in uh, um, a negative effect on its properties. Furthermore, EDTA as a, a canal irrigant showed a um, negative impact on BioRoot 2. BioRoot had uh, an important antibacterial effect, especially on Enterococcus fecalis. And finally, BioRoot uh, showed a good biocompatibility and bioactive on human pulp stem cells human PDL cells and human osteoblast. Now let's move uh, to the clinical part. Uh, we want to show you uh, our clinical study that we published in clinical oral investigation. Uh, this is a randomized control pilot study and the aim of this one-year follow-up study was to evaluate the outcome of endodontic primary and secondary treatment in teeth prepared with a similar protocol and obturated using either the single cone technique with a bioactive sealer or the work vertical compaction of good aperture and a ZOE sealer. In the University Hospital of Cagliari, for endodontic residents uh, perform a standardized instrumentation and disinfection protocol. The residents uh, use the rotary instruments as ProTaper Next and 5% uh, um, of uh, um, sodium hypochlorite as disinfection. This is our uh, real life department, our group, our boss, of uh, those times and of these uh, unfortunately days. The two obturation groups were the bio group and the PCS group. In uh, the first one, uh, the teeth were obturated with a single cone technique and bio root. And in the second one, the teeth were filled with the, the traditional wall vertical compaction of gara percha and pool canal sealer. The residents did uh, uh, the clinical and uh, radiograph follow-up at 1, 3, 6 and 12 months and two uh, calibrated examiners assigned um, a pay score to each radiograph, to each case, according to the periapical index score from Ostavik. The primary outcome was periapical healing where success was defined according to strike criteria. And the secondary outcome was to survival according to loose criteria. We studied with uh, 46 teeth for the control group and 38 in the, for the case group and 38 in the control group. And at the end, 39 teeth were filled with the, uh, the single cone technique and bio root and 30 teeth with uh, the world vertical compaction of Gura Percha and Pulcana Sealer. The follow-up rate was good and uh, um, success rate and survival rates were uh, at 12 months follow-up uh, good and were slightly better in the bio group than the PCS, both in the overall cases and in the subgroups where teeth with a preoperative uh, um, apical periodontitis was considered. All phi score decreased over time and uh, in this graph you can notice that uh, um, in the bio group there was um, an earlier reduction of the phase score. This is a representative case um, of a bio group. We can notice um, a large lesion um, sustained by these two teeth, and this large lesion reducted um, over time. Especially, we can notice um, a reduction on uh, of the lesion at three months. 
This is another case from the PCS group where a similar reduction can be seen in this group over time. So we state that um, survival and success rates at 12 months were good and comparable in both treatment groups and both techniques proved valid. The use of BioRoot together with the single cone obturation technique may represent a good feeling alternative to the use of warm vertical compaction of Gurapercha and a ZOS sealer. And on the other end, um, as stated in this uh, uh, systematic review and meta-analysis, um, no feeling technique has been ever proved to be uh, superior to another. And now let's move to other clinical studies, like this one. This is uh, a 12 months uh, follow-up clinical trial conducted by the uh, group of Professor Manocci. In this non-randomized case control study, um, the, um, the study was performed in a university setting and the teeth were obturated either uh, with, the, with a bioactive uh, um, sealer as BioRoot or with a resin-based sealer as uh, AH+. When uh, loose criteria and periapical radiograph were considered, uh, success rate was uh, good and uh, comparable in both treatment groups. In this retrospective analysis, uh, conducted in private practice setting in the US for specialist performed treatments um, using different uh, instrumentation technique and uh, all cases were obturated with uh, uh, another bioceramic uh, uh, sealers. In this, uh, uh, in this trial, in, uh, in this case, in, in, this, uh, in this study, um, the single cone technique achieve a high success rate. This case report uh, um, shows um, a successful uh, um, healing, a successful treat treatment of uh, a periapical lesion where the tooth were, uh, was obturated with uh, bio root. Finally, uh, this uh, case control study uh, shows the effic efficacy of uh, uh, the single cone technique in uh, conjunction with, uh, with uh, uh, a bioactive seed. And now um, we can see some tips and tricks that are useful in our clinical practice. BioRoot is uh, um, a sealer composed by a power and a liquid. The power based on tricalcium silicate, zirconium oxide and povidone, and aqueous solution of calcium chloride and polycarboxylate. In this video, we want to show you the proper mixing technique. First of all, you should collect a spoon of powder like this and five drops of aqueous solution. Once you have it, you can progressively add the powder to the liquid and mix it together to achieve a proper paste. About uh, 60 seconds. And you can 
reach the creamy consistency, the smooth paste, like we show you in this video. The manufacturer instruction uh, recommend to respect this proportion to uh, achieve the proper paste, the proper consistency. And this is what you have after one minute, more or less. At this point, you can use um, a paper point or if you prefer uh, a good aperture cone. And with this, you can coat it the canal walls. And put the master Garapercha cone previously coated with the sealer into the canal, like this. You can use a, a heat carrier to cut the coronal part of the Gudapercha cone. And when you do this, um, you have to pay attention uh, to not eat the sealer, as previously mentioned in the preclinical part. So if you use this uh, uh, indication, you can uh, uh, do um, a good feeling. You can do a good job with this uh, bioactive sealer. Like this, look at the video, look at the picture, this is a good feeling with the bioroot and the single cone technique. So, I want to show you some of my, um, some cases from my clinical practice with the single cone technique and bioroot. The technique is uh, simple, is uh, easy to learn and fast, and you can uh, um, obturate all uh, um, most uh, most cases with regular all or, or uh, complex anatomies like this in these pictures. So in my clinic, uh, in my practice, uh, the single cone technique and bioroot is uh, uh, a good alternative of uh, filling obturation. Okay. okay, now we're, we're getting close to the completion of this talk. So uh, going back to the beginning, we uh, introduced the importance of root canal obturation as a final moment of root canal treatment, uh, and also as the mirror, which reflects what has been done in the canal. Uh, and we pointed out that uh, the advent of hydraulic bioactive endodontic cements has changed very much endodontics practice in that we were able to solve problems that were very difficult to solve in the past because of the inherent hydrophilicity and sealing ability of SMNs. Then we have moved to bioceramic hydraulic sealers, which are really promising because as you notice from the studies, they're at least performing as any other technique, uh, with the difference that the technique is simpler, 
And the problem is, of course, we will need uh, long uh, recalls to show that they can accept the property uh, as expected of uh, their predecessor, which are the hydraulic uh, bioactive endodontic cement. So this is, uh, I think, we, this is the future. Uh, the future stands probably in a simpler obturation with uh, a different uh, uh, kind of sealer. So we thank you and we're ready to take any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, dear professors. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Um, so this is time uh, to go to the questions and answers. Dear professors, you can also switch off uh, switch on your camera and microphone. Uh, dear participants, you can send your questions and answers directly to the form uh, to the form question. Yeah, and so far we have several, please. Uh, the first one uh, is an overfill at the apex, a concern when using bioceramic sealers. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I should say that an overfill is always an over a, a concern because usually if you over extrude something, there must be a problem with the preparation or with, with the apical preparation or with the master cone. Uh, but in this case, uh, at least we know we're dealing with a very biocompatible material. So as far as my long experience with the bioactive sealers and cements, I should say it, it isn't a big problem in terms of reaction of a patient, if that is the question. Thank you so much. Uh, the second one, uh, what is the final irrigation or final irrigations can be used with the bio, uh, bioactive hydraulic sealers? What is your recommendation? Uh, final irrigation can be done with sodium hypochlorite or uh, if you want to do final with sterile saline, is okay. The only irrigant that shouldn't be used uh, easily before obturating using a, a bioceramic uh, sealer or even a cement is EDTA, which shouldn't be coupled with these uh, cements. Uh, it's probably better if you really want to clear the dentinal tubules that you use EDTA, then you use a uh, sterile saline solution and then you disinfect as as well as you can with sodium hypochlorite, but then don't use EDTA as the very last. What material do you use to seal canal uh, or face before placing composite core restoration? Uh, we use a uh, flowable composite. Okay. And the next question is about uh, retreatment. Is it easy to retreat? What are the tips? What's your recommendation? Um, it is, uh, well, we are just in the middle of a study. We did a few, um, Dr. Bardini and I did some samples and uh, many samples. And we're in the process of writing a paper on that. It is uh, reasonably, I wouldn't say easy, nothing is easy. If you do a good, in my my opinion, if you do a very good uh, obturation, nothing is easy to re be removed. Uh, but it's uh, feasible. Uh, we can do it either with a rotating instrument uh, or uh, with manual instrument, but better if you use rotating uh, instruments and a little solvents. Thank you so much. And the next one, hydraulic sealers, do they set in presence of uh, humidity? They should. As far as we know, they do. I mean, as far as we know from our experiments, they do. And as far as we know from many other uh, publications which are in the field, they, they do set with humidity. As I said, probably uh, at the beginning of a lecture, what is important is not to, not to confound humidity with total wetness. Of course, they, they play a good interaction with uh, moisture, which means that instead of being damaged by the contact with moisture, they are even enhanced in the property, but we're talking about humidity and not uh, total wetness, like not complete blood or uh, water or a root canal, which is completely wet. 
otherwise any product and even this uh, hydraulic sealer will not set. And then maybe just several others. So the one of them, if bioactive sealer play any medical role in obturation? I mean, we already say that they uh, uh, produce a uh, uh, high, uh, they, they increase the pH. So in that they, they exert uh, biostatic, uh, bactericidal or bacteriostatic activity by definition and that's all I can say and then the biocompatibility does the other but I wouldn't say we can affirm there is any medical component. Thank you and I hope yes that's all what we have. Uh, no, I found one more. <clears throat> uh, does um, bioactive sealer expand on setting? I think uh, the question is related to setting properties, I suppose so. I think it slightly expands, so, but not in, in, a, significant, in a significant way because of its uh, hydrophilicity, it, it, it does slightly expand. And, uh, and the rest comes after, uh, after setting, as we said, we can nucleate, so it can get a better seal with time. So thank you so much, uh, dear colleagues, dear participants, dear speakers. That's all the questions, maybe just one minute if we have more, but the, that's all the questions we have so far. Uh, yeah. Um, so, um, as the third part uh, that will be survey after, but I would like again to thank you for your participation. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, the webinar will be sent to all the registered uh, people. And uh, again, um, hope to see uh, us next time in the same company, uh, but maybe on the, another topic. So that's why you're more than welcome, dear participants, to share your opinion about the topics uh, in the survey in the end.